everybody. Welcome back to the Pace Studios. We are now live with Scott Bradley, the founder of the rotating musical collective Postmodern Jukebox. And with us also today is vocalist Morgan James. Thank you both for being here. I'm stoked yeah. this is that you're here and this is working. I'm Thanks. so glad this worked out. Um, yeah, so you guys contacted me and it turned out I was going to be in New York City and I've always wanted to do one of these and I thought it'd be really fun. So I called up one of my favorite vocalists, Morgan James, oh, to join me. You. Didn't tell her anything about it. She didn't even know this was going to be live. Nope. But you sure know didn't. what? It's too late for her to back out, so <laughs> she's going to have to do it. And I'm stuck now. Uh, yeah, you're really <laughs> stuck. Um, so actually, I thought we would start with one of the songs that we did. Uh, you remember the big European tour that we did in I 2015? Do. It's kind of when Postmodern Jukebox really took off in Europe, and um, you did the song Take Me to Church, and it got a standing ovation every single night. So Aww. we're going to imagine that every all these people on the internet right now are given a standing ovation after this one. Okay. okay. So let's try it. My lover's got humor He's a giggle at a funeral Knows everybody's disapproval I wish I'd worshipped him sooner If the heavens ever did speak He's the last true mouthpiece Every Sunday's getting more bleak A fresh poison every week We were born sick I heard them say My church offers no absolutes He says worship in the bedroom The only heaven I'll be sent to Is when I'm alone with you We were born sick But I love it Command me to be well Amen Like a dog at the shrine of your lies I tell you my sins and you can sharpen your knife Offer me the deathless death Good God, let me give you my life Take me to church I worship like a dog at the shrine of your lies I tell you my sins and you can sharpen your knife Sharpen your knife off of me 
<laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, studio audience. <laughs> that sounds so good. Thanks for coming and doing this. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So there's so the book that's out is it? I should know this. Is it out right now or is it coming yeah. out? Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's, it's out. It's, it's out in the world. Amazon, so outside the everywhere. jukebox. They just the finished world. it on the train on the way uh, we from nice. work yesterday, and it's great. I mean, it tells the whole story about how this collective came together. Mm. There's so much to talk about. We don't have all day to talk about it, but there is. I mean, one of the things that I think seems most applicable right now is to talk about your your process of sort of starting as a bit of a perfectionist, or not a bit of a absolute perfectionist yeah, you can earlier say it. on you can in your say career. It. <laughs> and then transitioning to somebody who is able to do more of a play the role of a gatherer of talent and let that talent shine. Can you talk about that, how that process? Um, yeah, I think I, I think in order to give any kind of advice to creative people, I had to kind of figure my own my own way of uh, getting past my own perfectionism, and certainly that uh, that hampered me a lot. I didn't really have any success in my career until I was over the age of thirty. I was such a perfectionist. I was afraid to put things out. I was afraid that things weren't good enough or that they weren't up to my standard or whatever. And um, it took accidentally kind of going viral on the internet for that to, to happen because then, you know, once you do that, it's out in the world. And you've got your, you know, your videos out there and people are commenting on it and you can't control what people say about it or anything like that, but you can, you know, move forward and, you know, take the good feedback and use it to fuel your future creative endeavors. So uh, then when Postmodern Jukebox kind of took off, then my role kind of changed into more of an arranger. I was a pianist at first and everything, and then became more of an arranger and a producer. And that's when I started uh, really working with a lot of other singers and a lot of other performers, uh, such as Morgan. And that was really fun for me because it, you know, it's fun to play piano and everything, but then it has a whole other dimension when somebody else can take their own life experience and their own interests and talents and put it into music. Well, I don't know if I answered the question, but that, I, yeah, it sounded yes, right. That was like an uncommonly right down the middle, exactly the question that I asked. You answered it perfectly. So uh, yes. I just wanted to <laughs> say passed. again, this is, this is going to be me thanking you guys a lot because I'm, I'm a fan <laughs> of your band personally. And so I'm, or no, excuse me, not a band. It's not a band. It's a rotating musical collective, which it's uh, a thing. It's is, okay. a, is a different thing. You made up that thing, but it's a thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was funny. I mean, there was no really blueprint of what, there was no blueprint of what, this concept really was, you know, I knew that I wanted to have this kind of alternate universe where performers could come in, in and out and be like these kind of vintage versions of themselves. And, uh, that was the whole concept that it was the starting point. And then it's evolved into this show that tours the world. And, you know, we got tour dates everywhere and we've got a YouTube channel and we're actually coming back with season two. So we did, um, kind of a, a five year season one, which is a little bit long by, I guess, pretty much any standards. But we were, uh, you know, we were due for a break. So I took the summer off, but not really, I didn't really take it off. I just more of uh, didn't release anything and spent all this time just tweaking new arrangements and recording new stuff. And actually, uh, if you stick around to the end of this, this I'm going to do a teaser like they do uh, before commercial breaks. Please if do. you stick around to the end of this broadcast, you're going to hear a new song that me and Morgan recorded uh, only with like an orchestra in season two. It's going to be pretty epic. Yeah. Just an orchestra, no big deal. Just, no big deal. just an orchestra. No big deal. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Everybody who's watching this right now, there's a ton of comments flowing, and there's there's people here. We've got an audience on awesome. the other side of these screens. And so, uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm everybody is looking forward to the rest of what's happening here. So you just play Take Me to Church just yeah. now, and you've got a second and a third song to play. Can you tell us what you're going to do next? Sure. Uh, well, I, I, I always like to use this song as an example of what – Postmodern Jukebox does, which is taking a well-known song and kind of reimagining it in a different light. And uh, this next one, a lot of people know it as like a hair metal kind of hard rock tune, Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses, famous tune. And uh, when we originally recorded back in 2013, uh, I cast uh, Mickey Braden, and this amazing singer who has got this like Bessie Smith style voice. And we completely revamped the song and made it into like a New Orleans blues song from uh, the 1920s. So this is one of our favorite ones to do live. And pretty much every singer, I think every PMJ singer has sung this song at some point in time. Yeah. I mean, you do an awesome version. Shoshana Bean does a version. Casey, Casey does one. Vaughn. Yeah, Vaughn's done it. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, but I don't think we've ever done it just piano and voice. So this is going to be a first right here for you guys at home. <laughs> okay? Sweet shot of mine.
This is amazing. Thank you, and guys, if you guys so much. Uh, don't follow Morgan. Go follow her. She's uh, what, uh, Morgana James. Morgan A. James. Morgan A. James. It's not Morgana? Nope. I think I was thinking it was Morgana all those years. Well, my middle yeah. initial is A. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. And Morgan, Morgan back, A. James. Come back here, hopefully. Hopefully we oh, host, I'd love host to a come session back. with you here in this room. I think we need okay. to start a change.org petition to get you Morgan James. Oh, Morgan James on my socials? Yeah. Yeah, someone had it before me. Uh. I know. This is amazing to have to have you in here like this. We've crossed paths with a lot of the cast members or the periphery members. Or people. Yeah, with you were saying Nicole up. Atkins has been in a, a couple of oh, times. I love Shoshana Nicole. Bean, Aubrey Shoshana's Logan, amazing. Hannah Gill, Puddles came in for a Puddles, session. Nice. Yeah, and it's just a total treat to have you guys here doing this. Yeah, so, yeah. So thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Um, and I did. So I want to talk about, and I think uh, potentially this involves Morgan equally as it involves as it involves you, Scott. But uh, in the book. So if you're just joining us outside the jukebox of this book, I'm holding it up in front of no camera, but it's <laughs> <laughs> I have a copy of it, I promise. I just finished reading it. It's outstanding. It's just and a prop. It's not real. There is, there's a ton of advice for emerging artists, for established artists. I mean, wherever mm. you are, I mean, it's and anybody really in a creative field. It doesn't necessarily apply strictly to musicians. 
Um, but there's a ton of great advice in there. And so you have very, very specific thoughts on, uh, on the effectiveness or the ineffectiveness of going the route of uh, a major record label or any record deal at all. I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you're, you've self-released everything. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, other than a few like distribution deals here and there for certain things, uh, you know, it's post monitor jukebox records. It's, you know, I am the label. So, uh, yeah, I think that actually Morgan would be probably good to start this out because Morgan has a pretty interesting story of going from, you know, the other extreme of being on a major label and then deciding to kind of take the reins and do everything independently. Yeah. You know, when Scott and I met, I was signed to Epic Records and, um, I really, I'm glad I had that experience for so many reasons, um, because I learned a lot. And I also, I was under the, um, false impression before I got signed that everything would be solved if I got a record deal. Everything would be amazing. There would just be a road paved out in front of me. And had I not had the experience at the major, I probably would still be under those, you know, pretenses, you know, Mm. and I, I learned a lot. I released two records. I learned how to make a record. I met a lot of people. I learned some really ugly things about the business too, you know, and ultimately, you know, I got dropped like millions of artists and I was sad and I was embarrassed and I didn't know what to do. And the one thing that no one can take away from you are your fans or the people and no label owns them, you know, whether you're signed or not. So what I found was that people turned out in droves when they kind of discovered that I was going to be going on my own and my management and my people around me were even, they doubled down and were even more supportive and particularly the fans were more supportive. So when I went out on my own, my independent record was, you know, my first record that I released once I was on my own was so successful and and the tour was successful. And, and, and so I just found that really, really heartening in in a, in a business that can be very disheartening. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I I think that there's still a lot of, there's a certain cachet around being on a, like getting a record deal. Like everybody gets excited. Like, you know, you hear somebody like, I want to get a record deal. Every kid, you know, with a a SoundCloud, you know, thinks that they want to get a record deal, but and it is, they do help in so many ways. It's, it's a, it's a nice checkbook and it's a, an infrastructure of people to help you. And sure. there are definitely advantages to it, you know, but it's not a magic bullet, you mm. know? Yeah. I think it's important for people to know what a record label actually does, like what, what the function is. And then when, the more you look into it, the more you realize that with a little bit of effort, you can kind of uh, use all those tools that are available to record labels just as a normal person, like using the internet. I mean, we have worldwide distribution. We have, you know, things yeah. like YouTube that can get you everywhere. Do you have things like Patreon and Kickstarter, which are huge for yeah. raising funds for projects and everything. And, you know, the great thing about being independent is then you can be hundred percent owner of something. You can, well, yeah, I don't own my masters wanna... on my first two records, but mm. now I do. And that's, that's huge for yeah, an artist, absolutely, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, back in the day, nobody owned their masters. You no. know, that was the, the thing. But the industry is, is gradually changing. You know, people are, uh, even within record labels themselves, they're having to kind of reconfigure things to adjust mm-hmm. to the new normal, which is, you know, 2018. And, um, yeah, I think it's just more rewarding to go the self, self-published self route. I don't, I don't think that's yeah. the right word for Well, I think there's no better does. time to be an independent. Yeah. Than well, now. Yeah, absolutely. Good for you. I mean, I'm stoked that you found that that you found that path first, and that Morgan, you you eventually found that path as well, and that it is what's working for you. Because I'm yeah. sure that there is some version of that equation that that works for anybody. Sometimes the, the label does make sense, but you found a found a different path and clearly found success at right. it. Right. Yeah. But there's there would have been nothing to succeed at if you hadn't. So another major theme of this book, and I've heard. I think you said it very eloquently, but I've heard it as uh, we had Billy Gibbons in here a while ago. Mm. He's talking about a very, very similar thing where find what you want to hear, find your authentic voice. And that's the only thing that anybody's going to care about, that there even is going to be a product to sell at all. And you, you found that clearly with, with taking popular tunes and and putting a different spin from a different era on them. Can you talk a little bit about, about that path to, to figure out what your own voice actually is? Well, I think it was something that, you know, I had always liked, I had always done this kind of stuff, even back in high school, you know, I would play for my friends would be, you know, do like a ragtime version of Big Papa by Notorious B.I.G. And I, I didn't think that anybody, I thought it was so niche and I, I thought it was not the way to get a record deal. So for a while I tried to dabble, I tried to do different types of music, whether it's rock or whether it's whatever, you know, people listen to on the radio. And 
I just failed at all that stuff because it wasn't authentic. It wasn't what I really like to do. And even certain types of jazz, you know, it wasn't exactly what I like to do. I like to, to do these kind of things, you know, just transform music. And, um, so it wasn't until I embraced that, that side that I really was able to kind of, I guess, find my voice as an arranger. And I guess more, you had the same thing with, I'm sure the record label was pushing to do one type of music that was already, you know, yeah, in yeah. existence. And now you have your own sound, which is Yeah, they different. were. But, you know, I thought on my first studio record at Epic, you know, I really butted heads with them a lot. And I mm -hmm. ended up releasing the record that I really wanted to make, which was probably the beginning of the end. It's you probably know. why they dropped you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> well, you know what? It's if, if you get dropped for doing it, I'm proud of that record and I'm happy. And 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 I, I learned a lot standing up for myself. Yeah. You know, I learned I learned what I really, really what mattered to me, you know, mm -hmm. and you have so much more creative freedom once you go out on your own. But having a voice to go with is is really important. Yeah. And also, I think once you got independent, I mean, your fan base just exploded. Yeah. Because you were doing the kind of stuff that you love. And there was this whole group of people that maybe don't listen to top 10 radio or something like that, but they exist. And yeah. And they're music fans. And they show up in shows, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know this from your shows. I know it from mine. Absolutely. People want to hear good music. They want to go hear live music. And they buy records and they buy CDs. And, and that's amazing. There's so many people out there. The record labels want to tell us that they, they're not out there, but they are, you know? They yeah. want to hear music. So there so we go. The, that's our message the for the kids out there. Stay in school, but and buy don't music. sign a record deal. But buy music. And go to music. Go, go out and see live music. music. So all your yeah. tour dates are up at pmjtour.com. Um, I don't have them listed right in front of me right now, but they are out there and they're easy to find in all the places that you would expect tour dates to be. So mm. please go buy a ticket and go see this. Go get out of your house. As awesome as this is. I mean, We've I do this to, uh, every day. Six These continents. Streams, and I just love missing it. Antarctica. That's the only one. But it's it's not a replacement for live music. You have to get out of your house and go see it. So mm. yes. Um, Thank you very much for being here. I'm enjoying the hell out of this. Uh, my yeah. day is awesome, so thanks for <laughs> making it that way. Um, and can, so can you tell us about the the third song that you're going to do, which is, is this premiere? Is there a recorded version of this anywhere? Um, yeah, on an album that's coming out on Thursday. Uh, I think Actually, I think I just announced that we're doing an album on Thursday. <laughs> Did you know it's going to be out on I Thursday? I didn't Did know that. that. I don't think I told you either. The no. album. Yeah, the album's going to be out on Thursday. Not the video. No, not the video. The Great. video is coming the next. Who knew? Yeah. That's so well, now we're just you heard it the internet now. You heard it first exclusive uh, at Pace <laughs> Session. Um, actually, I should tell my social media team, and we got an album out on, on Thursday. Um, I think so they this know. is <laughs> actually, you're going to get to see a world premiere of uh, this song that we did, which is a very big song. You know, I think that after I was favorites. taking a break from season one, you know, we picked, you know, pretty standard material, but season two, we got some, some pretty epic songs. And this is a song that PMJ normally wouldn't cover just because it's so, I mean, it's a great song and it's, um, a very big song and very, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. It's just something we maybe we wouldn't normally do. It's an iconic song. And, uh, you know, we thought we were just thinking of some ideas and we were kicking around ideas. And I think you came up with this one. And you were talking about how the Freddie Mercury movie was coming out. Yeah, and which I can't wait to see the Queen movie. It's going to be awesome, yeah. And I'm a huge so, fan of Queen. And this is our 10th video together. Is that true? That's crazy. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's together. right. Wow, happy, happy 10. Happy 10 year, yeah. 10 video, 10 video anniversary. anniversary. Yeah, there it right. is. Uh, so this is a, one of my favorite Queen songs, uh, Who Wants to Live Forever. And we're going to do a little piano version of this. We've never really done this before. But uh, if you stay tuned, in a couple weeks, you're going to see this on YouTube with a full orchestra, and it's going to be beautiful and awesome. All right, there we go. I'm done selling it. <laughs> and it's going to start with organ because acapella vocals are the most epic thing in the world. No pressure. There's no time for us. There no place for us what is this thing that builds our dreams yet slips away from us who wants to live forever who wants to live There's no chance for us 
it's all decided for us. This world has only one sweet moment set aside for us. Who wants to live forever? Who wants to live everybody thank you so um yeah that is i gotta say that that's one of the videos i'm the most excited really? about that we've ever done wow. like it's it's so epic it's gonna be so awesome wow. well, you see, did you get to epic. see it did you get to see it i did yes all right, good good i never like videos of myself but the arrangement oh. is epic no you sound amazing Are you kidding me? come on <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to it. There's a ton, ton going on with your career as always, as there has always been. Mm -hmm. um, remind me again. So, when does when season two come out? Uh, Thursday. Thursday. Oh, that, yeah. that was our the the thing that we just announced. Or is, is that the uh, and the album? The album. The album. Yeah. 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 So we got an album and we got a new new season. And I'm just I'm done with vacation. Back to work. All right. So there's a ton to look forward to. All yeah. the tour dates, of course, they're up at pmjtour.com and all the information about the about the band up at postmodernjukebox.com. And it's just, it's yeah. there's a ton and, out and there. And Morgan's also got her own tour. Also, she's yeah, got her own dates. Morgan you can check James out. online for all my tour dates and Morgan A. James on socials. So come check me out if, if I'm in a town near you. Cool. And yeah, hopefully we'll cross paths here in this studio. We've got a couple studios in this building yes. we work yeah, in. Yeah, get so her on one of these. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be around yeah. doing these. So okay. hopefully we, we do that. And mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed the book very much. Outside Thank the Jukebox you. tells the entire story of how this collective came together. There is a ton of good stuff in there for musicians, creative people of any any type. There's a lot of, lot of good... Uh, interesting story, but also good tips for, for how to get your thing off the ground. So, man, thank you again, both of you, for coming in and playing. We really, really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, fun. And, uh, yeah, tour safely. Have a great uh, – until we, until we see each other next. Thank Definitely. you so Sounds much great. for having us. Yeah, and thank you, guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye, everybody. I think that's the camera.